All right. Well, it's good to have Brother Andy and Miss Rachel Lawrence with us. And uh, they're uh, down visiting for a few days. And uh, I want them to come. And uh, I want them to say, uh, you pray for them as they do. All right. Now, I say this uh, about every time we have a visitor. But if the Lord shows up, we'll certainly uh, want him to have his way. Right. And uh, I, I, I don't have to preach this morning. I just want the Lord to be satisfied. And I want the Lord to do what he wants and what he wishes. And if that includes me preaching, then wonderful. Uh, if it does not, then that's just as wonderful. Because understand, it's all him. Yeah. I can't help you. I can't right. bless you. I can't change you. I can't encourage you. I can't do anything. If anything gets done, it'll be God who does it. Right. And so that's why it's so, such an urgency for us to pray because we need Him. You don't need to hear from me this morning. You need to hear, hear from Him. Right. And uh, so you pray for Him as they say. All right. Thank you, Brother Parker. The church, it's great to be with y'all. Thank y'all for letting us come be with you. It's, it's always great to travel around and, and get to meet like-minded believers and uh, nothing like the family of God. And, uh, we sure love your pastor, I tell you, everywhere. he can wear a suit better than anybody. I think <laughs> and, uh, we sure love his shadow and uh, get to be with us, get, we, we get to be with him every March. Uh, they're in, uh, just outside Houston, Texas for Brother Phil Dunn and uh, like he said, he is a wonderful brother, very special man. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're praying for him and his wife, Miss Robin, and uh, we'll give them grace. Yeah. Yeah. And um, uh, I sure appreciate the Sunday school hour Brother Aaron gave us. Yeah. And um, yeah. just the, the truth of standing still, letting the Lord do our fighting for yeah. us. Yeah. 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 My wife, Rachel, here of, uh, of uh, 17, almost 17 and a half years. Yeah. Wow. And, um, yeah. She, uh, uh, bless him. Get to be married to her is to get to hear her sing all the time. And I told her if she doesn't miss her anybody, she misses her husband. And, um, but our, our heart is definitely to uh, to get our minds and hearts focused on the Lord Jesus Christ. He's very This song helps me uh, uh, in those moments that uh, that we need yeah. when we can't uh, when we don't know what to do. Oh! 
Brother Aaron, uh, during Sunday school, I couldn't help but remember, you know, some of those names that you had to, to quote in Scripture. Have you, have you ever had any fun going to Starbucks and, and like, they ask you for your name and you give them a Bible name like Jehoshaphat? <laughs> and see their response. So. <laughs>
it's a rare thing for somebody to get up and just play an instrument. You know, yeah. Amen. Get on. Yeah. Brother Andy and Miss Rachel, two of my favorite saints. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I'm grateful yeah. that the Lord allowed me to come to Amen. Amen. It sure is a blessing. I appreciate them and their faithfulness. Amen. Amen. Our Savior. Yeah. Amen. My soul, my blessing. Amen. While he was playing that, my mind ran back through all the years. Yeah. And how faithful the Lord is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, I, like the old hymn writer, I would have to say this as I look back over my life. Great is thy faith. Yes. Yeah. My That's right. soul. How kind, how gracious, how long oh, yeah. suffering, yeah. how generous, yeah. how patient. Yeah. My, how faithful our God is. Amen. 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 I'm starting to get a little age on me now. And uh, as you get older, it changes your perspective. Yeah. <clears throat> you don't think the way you used to. Amen. And uh, I've lived for God long enough now to see His faith. Yeah. All through the years. Through sure. the ups and through the downs. Through the good times and through the bad. Great is His faith. Amen. Amen. Bless His wonderful, Amen. glorious name. Amen. He who owes me nothing has given me everything. Amen. He is wonderful. Amen. And, uh, and, uh, Amen. and this morning, um, I would like you to take your Bible, if you would, <clears throat> and I want you to turn uh, to the book of Luke, please. The book of Luke and uh, chapter number 16, because Luke 16. I studied and prepared uh, for this morning. And um, as I was studying and preparing, the Lord uh, burned my heart with a thought. And so I was working on it and uh, trying to uh, put it together and make sure I say everything that the Lord once said. And, Make sure I didn't say nothing that he didn't want to say. Right. And uh, I was sitting in my office this morning, uh, and the Lord uh, burdened my heart and gave me this simple thought. And uh, so I jotted it down. And uh, so what I, I said all that to say this, uh, the Lord has changed my mind on what I'll preach this morning. Uh, I just want to be obedient. You know far more about it than I do. Yeah. And uh, to be honest, I'm just a man. And my job is to deliver the mail right. to the mailbox. But what's written in that letter is between you and him. Amen. And uh, so I just want to be faithful and do what God's given me to do. And so if you would look at Luke chapter number 16, we'll start reading in verse number 1. Here the Lord is uh, using an illustration. Let's read it, verse 1. And he said also unto his disciples, there was a certain rich man which had a steward. And the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. And he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou mayest be no longer steward. Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my Lord take it away from me the stewardship. I cannot dig. To beg I am ashamed. I am resolved what to do. That when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of his Lord's debtors unto him and said unto the first, How much owest thou unto my Lord? And he said, and hundred measures of oil. And he said unto him, Take thy bill, and sit down quickly, and write fifty. Then said he to another, And how much owest thou? And he said, An hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, Take thy bill, and write four score. And the Lord commended the unjust steward, because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. And I say unto you, 
make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness that, notice it doesn't say if you fail. It says when you fail. Amen. They may receive you into everlasting habitation. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If therefore you have not been faithful in the, un in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in that which is another man, who shall give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and man. Amen. Our Father, this morning, thank you for the sweet spirit of God. Thank you, Lord, for the multitude of times. Lord, I felt your dear presence. I'm thankful for your people. Thank you for bringing Brother Andy and Miss Rachel this way. Lord, I pray you'd dump your richest blessings upon them. I pray you'd have traveling mercy on them. I pray you'd bless and move in their lives and ministry. Lord, I pray you'd touch them, help them. Thank you for them. And uh, Father, this morning, I pray you'd touch your unprofitable servant. Father, this morning, I realize what I am. Lord, I do not have the ability to help anybody, change anybody, bless anybody, encourage anybody. Lord, I certainly can't convict or save anybody. Father, Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. And Lord, that's absolute truth. And so, Father, I'm not depending on myself, my outline, my ideas. Lord, I'm simply going to lean into you and trust you that you'll bless the message and use it for your glory and for your honor. Lord, I pray you touch the unprofitable servant. Lord, I pray you touch me, anoint me, and use me for your glory, for the benefit of thy people, and to the rescue of sinners. May you have your will and your way this morning in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Here in our text, we find the Lord Jesus is using an illustration about a steward. And uh, this steward has a master. And uh, this morning, by way of introduction, I want you to notice three things, and we'll try to get into the message. Number one, I want you to notice the context. Look at verse number one, if you will. And he said also unto his disciples, there was a certain rich man which had a steward. And the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. And he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou mayest be no longer steward. Here we find that this man has a master. And this master is a rich man. And this rich man is in question of his steward. That he is not doing right with what he has been entrusted with. And this morning you realize that's what you are. You are a steward. Right. Yeah. God has entrusted you with some things. And listen, we must be very careful that we do not squander or waste yeah. what God has given us. Right. Yeah. God has been kind to us. And God has, has entrusted you and I with some of the yeah. richest blessings of our lives. Yeah. And this morning, we are just stewards. And we must be careful that we are faithful right. and that we do right by what God has entrusted us with. Yeah. Right. This morning, so the context is uh, a steward that hasn't done right by what he has been given. He has squandered it and he has wasted it and you will find that he is in a mess. But this morning you realize that if we do not honor the Lord right. with what he's given us, yeah. uh, we are apt to lose it. Right. Did you see what happened? The master calls him up and says, hey, come here. Uh, I, 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 you ain't been real faithful with what I've entrusted you with. You have wasted my goods. Not yours, but my goods. Right. Right. And you know what he said? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to fix it. You're not going to be my steward anymore. I would hate to think because of our disrespect, right. our, uh, our lack of attention on the blessings that God had bestowed upon us, that he might take them away. Right. I'd hate to think that God gave me something and because I was not faithful to it and I was not, uh, I did not do right by it, that God would look down and say, you are squandering yeah. my riches yeah. 
And I'm just going to take those riches right. from you right. and give them to somebody else. Yeah. <coughs> so we see the context. But secondly, I want you to see the concept. If you would look at verse number 10. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. Right. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. Notice verse number 11. If therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? Here's the concept that the Lord's trying to get across to us. If we can't be faithful and we can't do right by the small blessings that God has given us, right. why would God entrust us? Thank you, dear brother. Why would God entrust us with anything bigger yeah. or anything yeah. better. Right. This morning that book is full of things you are supposed to be doing. Right. Yeah. And if we fail in the to do the least of the, the things required of us, why would God promote us and give us anything more to do right. when we ain't even done right with the little bit right. that He's given us? Yeah. Listen, if you can't be faithful to give and, and, and support missions on a $15 an hour job, why would God give you a $30 an hour job? Right. Amen. If God can't trust you with a $10 bill, what makes you think He can trust you with a $100 bill? Right. And if He can't trust you with a $100 bill, what makes, it, what makes you think He can trust you with a $1,000? Right. You right. see the concept. The concept yes, is, if you're not faithful over that which is least, you're not faithful over that which is much. Right. Yeah. If you're unjust in the little things, you will be unjust in the big things. Sure. This morning, that ought to terrify us. Yes, sir. That if we ain't done right by the little things God's done for us and given us, then God looks down and sees our unfaithfulness to what He's given us and says they have not done right by that. I cannot and will not give them any more. Amen. 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 My point is this. According to what the text says, you may be missing the best God has for you. Right. Because you won't do right with the little bit he has. Yeah. Right. Right. Preacher, hear me this morning. If you are here and you won't be faithful to read your Bible and you won't be faithful to pray, right. then why would God expand your ministry and give you a greater outreach right. when you won't even be faithful with what God has entrusted you? Sure. Right. If you want God to use you and you want God to bless you, you got to start being faithful with what you have this morning. Yeah. You got to be faithful to read your Bible. You got to be faithful to pray. You got to yeah. be faithful to church. And if we can't handle the the, the minor small blessings, right. then how can we ever handle anything bigger? And how can God ever enlarge your ministry and use you in a greater and mightier way? Right. That's the concept. Keep looking. Look at verse number twelve. I believe it is. Look at verse twelve. And if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, you realize everything we got is another man's. Amen. It belongs to the Lord. Yeah. Amen. And God has, God has given it to us, but it's His. It's all His. If ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? You know what that reference is for the modern day Christian, for the, for the church of Laodicea? That reference is the judgment seat of Christ. Yeah. If you won't be faithful in what in that which is the Lord's, who's going to give you that which is yours? Right. Well, where are we going to receive that? We're going to receive it at the judgment seat of Christ. Right. Amen. This morning, the concept is this. Be faithful. If you've got $5 in your pocket, be faithful. Yeah. If you've got $50 in your pocket, be faithful. If you've got $500 in your pocket, be faithful. Right. God has given you the, the uh, inerrant, infallible, perfect, indestructible Word of the living God. And I dare say many of us have not even picked it up at all this week. Right. Right. If you can't be faithful to read your Bible, if you can't be faithful to pray, why would God entrust you with anything Right. We're not even doing the basics. Sure. And if you listen, if, if we've made it as simple as possible, we've got tracks back there with a church name on the map, service times, everything. If we won't be faithful to hand out a track, why would God entrust us to witness to anybody else or to use us in a way to win somebody else? Yeah. Sure. 
Because we're not even being faithful in the least of that, which is just leaving a track, leaving a card, inviting somebody to church. Right. I dare say we're going to be in trouble with the Lord. Right. So you see the, the context, you see the concept. But number three, I want you to see the choice. Look at verse 13. No servant can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and man. Mammon is an old English word. It means riches. Right. It means money. It means wealth. God's saying this to every believer this morning. You've got to make a choice right. who you're going to serve. Amen. You cannot serve yourself and you cannot serve the Lord. Yeah. You, you're going to have to make a choice right. in who you're serving. Sure. Are you serving for your betterment and for your good? Or are you serving for His good and His glory? Right. This morning, you're going to have to make a choice. This morning it is impossible to ride the fence and say sometimes I'll serve myself, sometimes I'll serve the Lord. Absolutely not. You will have to make a choice. Did you see what he said? No man can serve two masters. So you're going to have to make a choice who you're living for, who you're going to honor, and who you're going to serve. If you choose to serve yourself, uh, you, you will go do what you want to do. If you, if you choose to serve the master, then you will have to uh, do some things and it's going to require some things of you. But this morning, you're going to have to make a choice who you're going to serve, Amen. who you're going to live for, who you're going to honor. Right. If you're living for this world, it's a foolish decision. May I be honest, this world will pass away. Right. One day, God's going to melt it all down. Lord. And it ain't going to last. By the way, if you die, you ain't, you ain't taking none of this with you. Right. You will leave it all behind. It is a foolish individual who lives for that which he cannot keep right. and forsakes that which he cannot lose. This morning, you must make up your mind who you're going to live for. If you live for the world, uh, guess what's going to happen? You're going to leave it all behind, and, and it's never going to be uh, perfect anyway because we live in a sin-cursed world. If you choose to live for yourself, you are choosing to serve and live for a corpse. Right. According to the book of Romans, you're dead. Right. The old man is dead. Right. Stop digging him up and giving him everything that he wants. Right. It is of no benefit and it is of no value right. to you. you right. you got to make a choice. This morning, you know what he, Joshua said in the book of Joshua? Choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Right. And this morning, every believer, when your feet hit the floor, every morning, you've got to make up your mind who you're living for. Right. Are you living for your flesh? Are you living for this world? Are you living for pleasure? Are you living for what makes you happy? Are you living for somebody else? Right. Or are you going to live for God and put the Lord first? Yeah, that's right. Now this morning, I want to give you this thought quickly. Serving the Lord. Right. If you make the right choice, and by the way, it is the right choice to serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. There is some cost that go along. Right. There is some cost. I want to give you the cost of serving the Lord. <clears throat> May I be honest, I am not going to sugarcoat it. Amen. I am not going to try to spruce it up. Right. But I want to be just as honest as I can about serving the Lord. May I say, first of all, number one, it will require sacrifice. Right. If you're going to live for God, that means you're going to have to forsake some stuff. Yeah. Sure. That means you're going to have to sacrifice some things. And this morning, it is impossible to serve God without sacrifice. Yeah. See, the true servant knows he cannot serve himself and serve the master at the same time. Right. He knows there are times when he's going to have to make the sacrifice that he might live for, honor, and, and, and serve the, the God that saved him. Right. May I be honest, there's a lot of sacrifice in this thing. Yeah. You don't right. get to do what you want to do. Yeah. If you're serving God, you don't get to do what you want to do. Right. Yeah. Because hear me, the Lord's plan a lot of times is going to run contrary to your plan. Right. Right. Amen. You know what Jesus said? If any man follow me, let him take up his cross daily and follow me. And so you know what that cross is? That cross is vertical and it's horizontal. Right. You know what that means? It's not a literal wooden cross. It's spiritual. What that means is if you're going to serve the Lord and pick up your cross, you're going to have, this is where His will meets your will. Yeah. 
Where those two intersect, right. that's what you're going to have to pick up and carry with you every day. And you're going to have to decide, I'm going to live for him. That means if I'm going to do right this way, I can't serve myself right. this way. Right. And so this morning, if you're going to live for God and you're going to serve the Lord, there will be a sacrifice. Right. I mean, you'll have to give. You'll have to go. You'll have to do some things this flesh does not enjoy doing. Right. Now, but I promise you, I listen, 25 years of preaching the gospel, I, I'm almost 30 years of being saved. It is worth every mile of the trip and it's worth every sacrifice that I've ever made. Hear me this morning. I got saved in North Carolina. I was happy in North Carolina. I like North Carolina. But this morning I'm in South Carolina where the bugs never die and we only got two seasons hot and not so hot. And that's the only two seasons we got. And them bugs, uh, they can't be nothing but teeth because you walk outside it's like this all the time. And Listen, if I had a choice, I'd be in the mountains somewhere. Yeah. But personally, I prefer the mountains. I prefer a lake to the beach. I'd rather be somewhere where it's a, a, it actually gets cold and there's snow on the ground. But hear me, I don't get a say so in that thing. But God, as his servant, he directs my steps and puts me where he wants me. Yeah. This morning, you're going to have to make some sacrifices. People want to serve as long as they know the cost. Yeah. Right. Uh, God expects you to sign up without knowing the cost. You don't say, well, I'll serve the Lord if. Right. No, if you just submit to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm going to live for you. I want to serve you. And then you just go on living for God. And whatever it costs is whatever it costs. Yeah. Right. It ain't always easy serving the Lord. Right. There's a lot of sacrifices. Sacrifice of time. When you listen, I ain't had a, I, please don't think I'm complaining. I'm not. I love what I do. I, I am humbled that God would let me do it. But may I be honest, since I became a pastor, I ain't had a good Saturday night. Right. Very rarely, I, many of you have invited me and shut up this stuff. I generally don't do anything on Saturday. You know why? I spend my day reading my Bible, praying, studying, and preparing. So I've got something to say right. to you, and I can help you yeah. on a Sunday morning. Yeah. I don't get to go out and, 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 and go eat and go shop and go back. You know why? Because it's Saturday. Saturday means it's time to pray and read my Bible right. and study. Of course I read my Bible every day. Of course I pray every day. But there's something special about Saturday where I want to get tuned in and get focused on what the Lord has for a Sunday. Sunday morning, and then I'll go home this afternoon. I've already got the message. It's already put together. I, I got two of them actually, and, and I'll go home, pray, talk to the Lord, and get prepared for Sunday night. You know why? Because I understand. I may not get a nap on Sunday afternoon. I may not I be able to go out on Saturday night. Right. Most of my church knows this. On Wednesday, I generally don't even answer my phone. You know why? I dedicate that particular day uh, to the Lord because i got to uh, teach and preach Wednesday night. Uh, hear me this morning. Well, yeah, Everybody else uh, is out on Saturday enjoying the day, playing golf, uh, going out to eat, going shopping. You know where I'm at? I'm hemmed up in my office because I want to be, I want to do and be what God wants me to do and God wants me to be. You know why? Because of that, I will sacrifice my time and my, my, uh, my enjoyment on a Saturday because He matters and He's more important than whatever else I want to do. Right. Right. There's some sacrifice. Next Monday, I'll call in my truck. I'll drive four and a half, five hours. I'll be in meeting Monday through Thursday. Thursday night, I'll crawl back in that truck, get home at 1 2 o'clock in the morning. And you said, why? Because there's a sacrifice. We want to serve the Lord. Yeah. 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 Amen. You're going to have to count the cost and be willing to forsake some things if you live for God. Amen. So number one, there'll be a sacrifice. Number two, there will be a struggle. God uses burdens, problems, and struggles to mature His children. Right. To make you into the servant you are supposed to be. Right. Nobody gets to serve God without struggle. Amen. Nobody gets to uh, gets gets off scot free. Right. Nobody has a clear path. Nobody gets to uh, get out of this thing without some bumps and bruises. Right. Hear me. I did many people think that oh the will of God's like this. No, it's not either. It's like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the will of God. Right. Yeah. We were laughing this morning, me and Miss Rachel. I, I, and I quoted this. I said, if uh, you want to hear God laugh, tell him your plans. That's right. 
Hear me, there will be struggle. And listen, you will have to uh, not only pay the price, but you got to be willing to endure the struggle. Right. I think of the Apostle Paul, you know, God used him in a great and mighty way. You said, man, and he got to write most of the New Testament, and he's unknown by every Christian on the planet. Uh, and man, that'd be wonderful. Uh, yeah, but may I remind you, he also had a thorn in the flesh. Uh, I listen that he besought the Lord Christ and said, Lord, take it away from me. And the Lord said, no, uh, my grace is sufficient. Right. And God left the thorn yeah. and Paul dealt with the thorn. And even though he was serving God, it did not exempt him from problems, right. troubles, and trials. God still allowed storms and problems to come into his life. He said, I was shipwrecked. A damn night of a spit in the deep. He said, I've been whipped. I had got 40 stripes, save one. And he said, I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Hear me this morning. If you're going to serve, if you're going to right. do right by him, it will be a struggle. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a salesman. I am not Joe Olstead. Right. I'm not going to tell you every day is a Friday. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. Serving God, some days it's not easy. Yeah. Yeah. Living for God, some days it's not easy. Yeah. Learning the lesson so you can be a better servant. It's not always easy. Amen. Amen. What you must understand is this thing ain't about you. Right. And it ain't about me. Yeah. It's all about Him. Yes, right. And this morning, my responsibility, my obligation as a servant is to glorify and honor my master and make sure he is lifted up. It ain't about my comfort. Right. It ain't about uh, me getting everything that I want. I understand God's good and God blesses and thank God for it. But to this morning, if you're going to serve God and live for God, there will be struggles to go with God. That's right. That's right. Can I say this yet again? It's worth every mile yeah. of the trip. But can I say number three? Not only is it a sacrifice, not only is it a struggle, but number three, you're going to need a substitute. You say, what do you mean, preacher? How am I going to serve God? If I don't serve God, and have to have a substitute. This is what I'm telling you. You in your flesh cannot serve God. Right. You need the Spirit of God to empower you that He lives for God through you. Amen. Amen. I quote it in my prayer regularly. Jesus said, without me you can do nothing. Listen, you know what he meant when he said nothing? Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> that means nothing. Right. Yeah. That means if anything gets done, I am going to have to have his help and his assistance right. to accomplish that thing through me. Yes, sir. Yeah. Now, to be honest, listen, I, 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 in this place, what am I going to do? Yeah. What am I going to do? Right. I, can't, I can't come to your house every Sunday morning and wake you up and make sure you're here for Sunday school. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And if I did that a time or two, some of y'all would have a shotgun waiting on me the next time. I can't make you love God. I can't make you live for God. I can't make you do right. I can't convict you. I can't change you. And I certainly cannot save you. Your what am I going to do in this flesh? Nothing. I can't do nothing. What that means is I need somebody else to show up and do what I cannot do. Yeah. Somebody said, how do you stay in the same place 18 years? Because it ain't me staying here. It's the Lord that keeps me here. Right. It is the Lord's grace and the Lord's mercy and the Lord's kindness uh, that works through me to help me and keep me in the service of all my right. God. I'm under no illusions. I know what this flesh is. In this flesh, Paul said, dwelleth no good thing. Listen to me. The only good thing about me is the Lord. Everything right. else is me. Yeah. Uh, the only good thing about me is the Lord. Uh, and hear me, the only good that I do is what the Lord puts in my heart to do. And if you ever takes it out of my heart, I won't do it. Right. Amen. It's all here. Yeah. And if you think you're going to serve God independently without the Spirit's assistance, you are sadly, wrongly mistaken. You need somebody bigger than you right. doing the work through you, helping you, giving you the strength and the energy and the ability and the wisdom to serve Him acceptably. Right. You cannot serve God in this flesh. Ah, listen, you need the Spirit of God to anoint you and help you right. and give you what you need for your particular service, oh. whether it be singing, whether it be preaching, whether it be witnessing, whether it be praying, whatever God we're working in some ministry, whatever God's got you to do. You'll need somebody bigger than you yeah. to do it through you. Yes, sir. Sure. Man. That's good. 
You cannot, you cannot serve God in this way. Yeah. It's wretched. It's vile. It's wicked. Yeah. And it's corrupt. Yeah. Yeah. So if we are going to serve God, we need the Lord's help to help us to serve God. Right. Yeah. You need a substitute. Yeah. Listen, I've seen a lot of them through the years. And please think me not critical because I am not. I say this with a broken heart. I've seen them get mad and get bitter. Get bitter at people. Some of them get bitter at the Lord. Next thing you know, they bail out and they quit sure. serving. Yeah. You know how I can have such a sweet, sunny disposition? <laughs> you know how, how come I can forgive? Because yeah. the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. In this flesh, you don't always want to forgive. Right. Yeah. In this flesh, you want to hang on to it. You want to hang on to those slights and those wrongs sure. by others. Yeah. And the only way you're going to let that, because hear me, if you serve God, somebody ain't going to like it. That's right. Oh, yeah. Somebody's not going to appreciate you. Somebody's going to disagree with you. Somebody's going to be critical of you. Right. If it was me, I wouldn't have done it that way. Right. That's right. I guess that's why God called me to do it instead of you. <laughs> he wanted it done the way I do it instead of the way you do it. Right. Right. Yeah. If God wanted it done your way, He'd probably call you and let you do it your way. That's right. But He didn't. He called me, and so I'm going to do it the way the Lord tells me to do it. Amen. I'm just saying. That's right. You know, somebody's going to be critical. Yeah. See, this is what you think. You think, well, I'm going to serve God, and everybody's going to get behind me and love me. No. Yeah. yeah. Let me pray about that. No. <laughs> they are not. <laughs> They're not going to understand. They're not going to agree. They're that's not right. going to like it. Yeah, they're not going to say, oh, you're nuts for doing that. I wouldn't do that. That's, right. I, that's correct. Yeah, that's why God called me, not you. Because yeah. maybe he knew you wouldn't do it. But I'm willing to do it. And so, listen, you may not agree with me. And God bless you. you got a right to be wrong. I love you. you got a right to be wrong. I, I'm not trying to please you. I'm trying to please Him. Right. And my point is this. If you sell out and serve God, somebody's not going to like it. You're going to get your feelings hurt. Right. Somebody's going to disagree with you. Somebody's going to talk about you. And you're going to have to develop the height of a rhinoceros if you're going to stay in this thing. Right. You can't quit every time somebody says something negative about you. Right. You can't get mad yeah. and get hurt and say, I'll give up because somebody hurt your feelings because you heard they said something bad about you. Let me what you better do. You better put that stuff behind you. Pray about it. Ask the Lord to keep that bitterness and hard feelings yeah. and junk out of your heart and you go on and serve the Lord the best of your ability. Right. You're not going to be accountable for what they said. You'll be accountable for how you responded right. to what they said. And listen, you may hurt my feelings. You may disagree with me. You may not like me. You may say something negative about me. But I'm not going to let you and your comments and your critical spirit prevent me from living for God, honoring the Lord, and doing the very best that I can do to please him. Right. Hear me this morning. You're gonna to have to toughen up and you're gonna to have to right. have to right. yeah, you're gonna to have to get a backbone. I man because everybody ain't gonna love you. Everybody right. ain't gonna care about you. Everybody ain't gonna be kind to you. Hey, right. hear me. Serve God anyway. Yeah. It is yeah. worth every bit of it. And God's got God, I'm not gonna stand for God. And God say, Well, I understand why you quit because somebody I didn't like your time. Do you really think that excuse is going to hold water for you? Right. right. God didn't call me to preach as long as everybody liked it. God just called me to preach. Right. So I'm going to go on and preach and do what God said. And if folks don't like it, God bless you. I love you. I ain't mad at you. <clears throat> My point is this. If you live for God, you'll need a substitute. You'll need somebody inside of you giving you the strength and the power right. and the ability to forgive and the ability to love. Because you realize it ain't natural to love folks who hate you. That ain't natural. You hate me, bless God, I hate you right back. That's what the flesh says. Yeah. Show you. But for the servant of God, he's got to love those that despise him. It's the only way you're going to live for God. This morning, I'm just being honest. But this morning, can I say this? It's been worth every bit. Amen. Yeah. Every bit. Sure. And I'm grateful and thankful Amen. that the Lord has kept me in this thing. If you stay in this thing, it won't be you. It'll be the Lord. Right. 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 But tonight, this morning, I'm going to give you the last thing and I'm done. Not only will it be a sacrifice, not only will it be a struggle, not only will you need a substitute. Well, that's encouraging this morning. Yeah. Live for God. It's going to be a battle. <laughs> but can I give you this last I want you to see the settlement. Look at verse 2. And he called him. 
That's the master. And said unto him, How is it that I hear, thee of, hear this of thee? Notice the next statement. Give an account of thy stewardship. You realize that one day we're all going to make the judgment seat of Christ. And we're going to give an account of how we serve God. That's right. I'm glad it's not a sin question. Your sin will take care of a cow. Amen. And that's bought and paid for. But it's a service. Amen. Amen. You will stand before God Almighty and give an account of what you did with what He gave you. That's right. In the book of Matthew, there's a story of the, ta uh, the, the talents. And in the book of Luke, there's a story of the pounds. And you will find the master gave one of them ten pounds. He gave another five pounds. And he gave another one pound. You know what that is? That's stewardship. He gave you what you got. Yeah. Right. Then, after a while, he calls them same three servants up and makes them give an account of what they did with what he gave. Now, my question this morning for, for you is this, as I close, Miss Kayla, as I, as I close, what are you doing with what God gave you? Right. Are you using it for the glory of God, or are you squandering it upon yourself? Right. You will give an account. Oh, yeah. The Bible in the book of Luke says this, I know thou art an austere man. Right. You know what austere means? Hard, rigid. I'm glad He's the, the, the meek and lowly Jesus. I'm glad He's the Lamb of God and He saves sinners. But when we meet Him on the other side of the judgment seat of Christ, it's not going to be the meek and lowly Jesus you run into. It's going to be the, the King of kings right. and the Lord of lords. Yeah. He's, going to make you, he's going to make you give an account of your right. stewardship and what you did with your time, what you did with your talents, what you did with your money, what you did with your family, right. what you did with your Bible, what you did with your prayer life. All of that, God's going to hold us accountable. So we better get to work. And right now reminds you uh, where we're at in history. Well, we are fixing to get out of here. This thing's fixing to right. be over. We are seeing things come to pass that reveal to us Jesus is coming soon. For the love of God, if we're ever going to make a difference for God, if we're ever going to live for God, if we're ever going to be good stewards for God, right. we better get to work this morning and we right. better start uh, being good stewards of what God gave us because one day He will hold us accountable. Right. One day we will stand before Him. One day He'll call us on the carpet and say, give an account of thy stewardship. What did you do with what I gave you. Amen. Yeah. Hey, you you spending your time? Yes. You spend more time in front of TV than you do in the Bible? Right. How you pray? Are you praying? I mean, have you shut everything else off and found a prayer closet, went in there and shut the door and got a one with just you and God? When's the last time you handed out a tract? Right. When's the last time you invited somebody to church? Right. This morning, my point is this. I didn't come to beat you up, but I come to, to warn you. Right. You will give an account of your stewards. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. This morning, we better get at it. Yeah. Because the judgment seat is coming up on us. This morning, if you're going to serve the Lord, it's going to cost you something. But all the reward. At the, can I be honest? God rewards us here. Yeah. I got no complaints this morning. God's been good to me. And I've tried to serve Him and honor Him. I don't serve the Lord for the blessings. But I serve the Lord because I love Him. And because He called me. But because I serve Him. And I try uh, to keep my heart right and serve Him because I love Him. He has added all the blessings that He's given me right. and to my life. Uh, so He rewards us here. But oh, what a day it will be at the judgment seat of Christ. When the Lord rewards us and says, well done. Well done. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. I want right. to hear Him this morning. I want to hear Hear him say, well done. I don't want to stand before him and incur his frown. I don't want to, I don't want the Lord to wrinkle his brow at me and say, I can't believe you squandered everything that I gave you. I want to serve him acceptably. I want him to be pleased with my service. Amen. Amen. I hope you do as we stand. Father, I love you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for a warning this morning. That Lord, we will give an account of our stewardship. Lord, all that we have, all that we do, uh, Lord, all that you've bestowed upon us, Lord, you've given us all the same 24 hours in a day. Lord, you've given us all time. Lord, you've given us all money. You've given us all resources. Lord, you've given us all uh, King James Bibles. Lord, we have them. 
but laying in our lap instead of hiding them in our heart. Lord, help your people. Lord, to be mindful that, Lord, it is right to serve you. It is right to live for you and honor you. And it's worth every sacrifice. It's worth every struggle. Lord, and, and remind your people this morning that it's worth it all. Just one glimpse of your dear face will make it worth it all. Lord, help us to remember we need a substitute that we cannot serve you adequately in this flesh. Help us to submit ourselves and surrender ourselves and yield ourselves so that you might work and move and accomplish the service through us. Help us to be a willing vessel and a submitted vessel that you might work through us and get the glory. Help us to remember, Father, there will be a reckoning one day. We will stand before you. We'll give an account of our service. I'm grateful our sins are covered. But, Lord, our service will be brought into question that day. Lord, help us to be mindful of that. Help us to serve you, live for you, and honor you. Whatever you do for us, Father, we'll be careful, very careful, to thank you and praise you. Thank you for the opportunities you've given us. Thank you for the resources you've supplied for us. Help us to do right with them. Help us to honor you with them. Help us to serve you. We love you. Make servants out of us. Lord, whatever you do for us, we'll thank you. We'll praise you in Jesus' name. problem in Laodicea is we have, we have a lack of days of going kind of relaxed kind of atmosphere of Christianity and to be honest we ought to tighten up a little more and we ought to serve God acceptably you say I don't know what to do pray and ask him he'll tell you this morning we better make sure we're serving him because he's going to make us give an account this morning I want to hear him say, well done. Amen. If you do, get to it. Let's get at it. And let's make sure that we're doing what God has given us to do. You enjoyed having Brother Andy and Miss Rachel say amen. 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 All of your music's available on streaming platforms, right? I'm, I'm old. I remember we used to get a cassette. It's all right. And, uh, but now it's all... What on uh, wherever them platforms are. So go to your local platform and pick that pick their music up. I promise you there'll be a blessing. Amen. I still listen to the CD you gave me and I've about wore it out. And so we love Brother Andy and Miss Rachel. Be sure to shake their hands. And Amen. this morning we're not going to dismiss the word of prayer because we're not done. We'll fi we'll dismiss tonight when we finally finish up. And so this morning you're at liberty to go in the spirit. Amen.